Hi, my name is Amara Chiku and I'm currently an intern of the Web3 Bridge Cohort 7. Um, so we are one week into the cohort and it's going to last for four months. So look forward to hearing from me at the end of every week for the next four months. So for the past few days, uh, we've learned about the blockchain and the types of blockchain, distributed ledgers, consensus mechanisms, hash functions, cryptography, and mercury. So I'm going to try and run through them very quickly. So what's blockchain? Blockchain is basically, as it sounds, chain of blocks. So what's inside these blocks? Series of transactions that are bundled together into blocks and they are linked together at the end of every block. So creating a chain so there are types of blockchain you have the public private and the consortium blockchains so basically a blockchain is meant to be um public so it's meant to be accessible by everybody centralized in mid-level and but then um series of access level has made it that um other interests have made it that we have private and we have consortiums in the sense that private is where it's a blockchain but then it's owned by one entity so instead of it being decentralized and everybody can access it it is um it is just owned by one entity which can choose to um delete you or even restrict your access to the blockchain so we also have consortium similar to the private blockchain but then in this case is owned by um a group of um organizations let me take financial organizations organizations for an instance so let me say different banks coming together to own a blockchain so and they're given um several access levels different access levels to the blockchain so it's not open to everybody it's just this selected set of organizations so the blockchain it's if it's decentralized if it is um immutable so there, there has to be a way that users of a, a blockchain gets to meet an agreement so that's where consensus mechanism comes in and this makes it possible for users of a blockchain to reach agreements and uh, agree on taking an action or agreeing, or agreeing on the state of the blockchain so we have the proof of work proof of stake and several others so we have hash functions so hash functions basically is a, is a one with functions that helps us hash um a, a readable value into an a humanly irreducible value so and it's one way in the sense that once you hash something you can use the hash to get back what you hashed to get the hash so you also have cryptography so this is a way of encrypting data to ward off unnecessary parties from having access to the data so um that's what cryptocurrency cryptography is all about so it's used in several parts of the blockchain and it's of a very good importance in the blockchain so micro trees um i'm going to talk about this more because prior to the last week um classes i didn't really get what the blockchain actually uh, what the micro tree does for the blockchain so i was able to get that um very well at the end of last week's classes so what it actually does for the blockchain is it makes it possible for you to create a blockchain uh, and get specific data as the way you want them just like the way you can write your sql statements and coin them to get data as the way you want them so mercury makes this possible for the blockchain so you don't have to deal with the whole um data in the blockchain you have a way of getting the ones you need um in small units you don't have to ha work with the blockchain the whole data in the blockchain because it's actually very large so this is what mercury does for the blockchain so i was able to get that um in last week's class so look forward to hearing from me for the next four months at the end of every week so i'll be sharing my knowledge and what i learned and what's every how everything turns out so thank you